Okay, now we turn to solving linear systems with the Laplace transform method. This is an example that looks at how we can use matrices and Laplace transform together. We've seen spring mass systems a lot from starting in chapter three, LMS spring systems in chapter four, and um, now we're going to look at the same double mass spring system back from 4.4, but instead of solving it using the eigenvalues and eigenvectors, we're going to look at it using a, a Laplace transform. So let me write down the system we had. In this case, we're going to use x and y instead of x1 and y and x2, just to keep it a little bit simpler. Little x transforms to capital X, little y transforms to capital Y. So, for this example, we're going to use some symmetric boundary conditions. And I will choose to start at zero for each of these masses and then give them uh, some, some, a symmetric initial um, velocity of one, both moving in the positive direction. And before we start solving this, let's uh, divide by capital M and simplify this up a little bit so we can see a little bit more clearly. X double prime is equal to two. There's a minus three. We'll treat K over M as omega squared. Just a, a parameter to help us track the frequency times x, and then a minus uh, plus two k, sorry, two omega squared y. On the bottom, we again divide by m, and we get a plus two omega squared x minus three omega squared y. Okay, so the nice symmetry here. Now grouping all of the unknowns on the same side, this is our standard form, we would have x double prime plus three omega squared x plus, oh sorry, minus two omega squared y equal to zero, so a homogeneous equation there, that's nice. And then y to the prime plus three omega squared y minus two omega squared x equal to zero. And I'll erase this. Okay, so now we're going to transfer, transform both sides of the equations, or just the left hand side because the right hand side starts stays at zero. And as I transform, I'm going to move the initial conditions onto that right hand side, the known pieces. So in terms of the x's, I will get an s squared plus 3 omega squared. In terms of the y's, just 2 omega squared. And maybe that'll be easier if I do a chemical like that. On the right-hand side, I get the initial conditions. So 0 for the transformation, 0. 
and then I add the pieces from X double prime. So I first add the initial position, and then I add the initial velocity. Again, we're stepping down in terms of S, starting with S squared, then S, then 1, as we go up in derivatives in terms of initial positions. On the second equation, I will have my Y's expanded as S squared plus 3 omega squared Y. And then my X component has a minus 2 omega squared capital X. On the right-hand side, I transform 0 to 0, and then I add the initial conditions for y. So off of y double prime, I get first s times y of 0, and then plus y prime of 0. So first initial position, then initial velocity. Well, initial positions are both 0. So that's nice. Now let's form the matrix version of this equation. We first have the coefficient matrix times the variables, capital X, capital Y. The X coefficients are S squared plus 3 omega squared and a negative 2 omega squared. The Y coefficients are negative 2 omega squared and an S squared plus 3 omega squared. The Resultant vector on the right-hand side is based upon the two initial, uh, sorry, the two initial velocities. So they're actually both one. It's kind of cool. So to solve for x and y, we have to either solve this linear system directly or invert using a matrix inverse, which is really just Framer's rule. That's first take the determinant we get s squared plus 3 omega squared times itself minus this product so minus 2 omega squared quantity squared. Now, since it's the difference of squares, we can factor it, and we should factor it as a product of two pieces. We first take the difference, so s squared plus 3 omega squared minus 2 omega squared is s squared plus omega squared. There's one of the two related pieces. Notice that's a nice s squared plus b squared, right? So we have one of our cosines pieces. And the other piece is when I add the two, and that's s squared plus 5 omega squared. Again, we have a nice s squared plus some b squared, where b is squared of 5 times omega. Okay, so that's the determinant of our coefficient matrix. For Krimmer's rule, we take the modified determinant divided by this determinant. So the first modified determinant has a 1 and 1 in our first column, and a minus 2 omega squared and an s squared plus 3 omega squared on top, and then the determinant of a on the bottom, which we just computed. So let's move that down. We'll get an s squared plus 3 omega squared minus a negative 2 omega squared plus plus 2 omega squared, all divided by s squared plus omega squared times s squared plus 5 omega squared. Now looking at these two pieces, we have an s squared plus a 5 omega squared on top, which cancels directly with s squared plus 5 omega squared on the bottom, leaving us with just 1 over s squared plus omega squared. Now let's look at the y.
here, we get the s squared plus 3 squared times 1. Minus, it's the same thing. We're subtracting a negative 2 omega squared, so we're adding it. We get that s squared plus 3 omega squared plus 2 omega squared. We're dividing by the same denominator, s squared plus omega squared. And again, we cancel out one of the pieces. Now, what does this relate to physically? Because we chose initial conditions that pushed the masses in sync with one another, we essentially are canceling out the effect of the middle spring. So the frequency that's based upon the middle spring, S squared, related to the S squared plus 5 omega squared, this square uh, plus or minus square root of 5 omega, that frequency is what's being uh, removed from the motion of these two masses when you have symmetric in sync motion of the uh, initial position, uh, sorry, the initial conditions. I would get the same effect if I pulled them both to the right and let go. I pulled both to the right the same amount and let go. I would also be canceling out that the contribution of that middle spring. Okay, so now that we've reduced it down, let's invert our capital X and our capital Y to find out what our actual solutions are in the real world. So, to match this with a function, we have one right now, but we need something else. We need to have an omega here, because omega is our B value for the Laplace transform for sine. And so we need a 1 over omega on the outside, and that gives us 1 over omega times the sine of omega t. So the, the movement of the x position starts at zero because we have an initial position of zero, but it moves to the right related to the frequency or angular velocity, if you will, of our motion. And then let's solve for y. Well, actually, we, we know that y is the same. It has the same transform version. It looks like it's the same smoothie on the trans the frequency side. It's going to be the same ingredients on the uh, time this time signal side. So again, we have the inverse of one over s squared plus omega squared. So we multiply by omega in the inside, divide by omega in the outside to get our form, our nice balanced form of the transform of sine of omega t, and that gives us 1 over omega sine of omega t. The same thing for both cosine, or for both x and y. So, what new pieces did we end up using? Well, nothing. Really, not, not nothing really. There nothing, nothing was new here, actually. It was all just a combination, uh, a greatest hits, if you will, of the previous pieces. We used Kramer's rule in solving a 2x2 two by, two by two linear system because we assumed that the determinant was not, well, it can't be zero, right? As long as we have, well, except for possibly at those frequencies, but everywhere else is not zero. And then, once we had the transform versions from that linear system, we simply invert using our table. And if necessary, we could have broken it apart. If we were unable to cancel those out, we would have used partial fraction decomposition, broke it up into pieces, and found out how much of the first frequency sines and cosines, how much of the second fre frequency with sines and cosines, that's fine. So the initial conditions, again, 
don't tell you what kinds of ingredients you're using, but they do control how much of each. And our particular choice of initial velocities and positions this time canceled out and told us, you know what, we're not having any bananas. This is a full apple smoothie right here. That's fine.